Thank you for staying with us. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. And it says, Tinubu suspends Beta Edu, others probe by EFCC. Um, so as we all know, Beta Edu is a minister of humanitarian affairs. And there's been a 585 million naira that has been transferred to an individual account where everybody is looking at. So that's where the spotlight is on. And the president has suspended Beta Edu for now um, because of this. Um, incident. But joining us to have a conversation and talk more about this is Dr. Oshinowo. Um, good morning, Doctor. Thank you for joining us. Hello, good morning. We can't hear you. Hello. I think you might be muted. Okay, fantastic. We can hear you now. Um, so, yes, okay. we're joined with Dr. Ibrahim Oshinawa, yeah. the Enterprise and Investment Risk Expert. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, dear and Good morning, my dear friends and colleagues right there. Yes. Okay, so we're looking at the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. About 585 million was being transferred to an individual account um, by the Minister Beta Edu. And we've seen in the past the other minister who just left, Sadia, also um, kind of siphoned some money as well. What is your take on this ministry first? Let's just start with that. The fact that it, it is, a, it is a, a, a way for people to just take out money in terms of palliatives and other things. And sometimes we can't really even ascertain what these monies are being used for. Anyway, um, good morning once again. Um, it's um, very sad for the, um, the government of Senator Bola Ahmed Tinumbu that in less than one year, uh, full success has been, you know, um, published. Yeah. That almost about 100 billion has been stolen from mm. the new government. Do not for a viable group, but we could see the traces and we could see a uh, few people who are not deserved to be in office who are appointed. You know, like I said, Ashwari is very magnanimous when it comes to, you know, uh, doing things for people. But one thing I know he will not do is to compromise the trust of over 220 million Nigerians. Uh, the ministry is specifically created to service the poorest of the poor in our country, to ensure that the downtrodden are well managed and supported. But it's so unfortunate that the last two ministers, that, is, that the, the pioneer, the first one, um, Sadia, was moved from refugee commission and moved to that ministry as a pioneer minister. We can't say she has been found guilty yet, but the monies that are missing in the ministry is in the two of over 60 billion. Yeah. In the ministry, in less than four years that she, you know, she becomes the minister of that agency. Fake register, policy, Names, start funding money on, you know, supplying five bags of rice and they will turn it to 5,000 in corn nuts, supplying grains, 100 bags of rice to our five bowl, and they will turn it to 2 million bags. Mm. So sad. And now let's come to better. I know better very well, very young girl, 35 or 34. She served in one of the committee with me. In fact, when she landed in Abuja, I'm saying this publicly, I'm sure she will hear me. I used my official car in Abuja to take better around in Abuja because she could even when she wants to move to AIT for an interview, I'll ask my driver to drop better in Abuja. She's like a younger sister to me, and I believe that. Our age group who are asking and shouting for inclusiveness in government yeah. are seeing what is on the table. 
I'm a member of the party, but I'm a professional. The youth, 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 inclusiveness, we want the youth, we want the world to retire, we want the world to do this, we want the world to do that. But they themselves can see there hasn't been traffic online. No youth has not been talking. They've not been speaking up. The likes of France and uh, Macaroni and the rest of them who are in their younger thirties could not speak up. This is the youth that you are talking about. I should have been giving you most of the young boys, including the Minister for Interior, the Minister for Youth and Sport, and among others, police affairs. You can see what they can do, what they, what they can offer. This is what they can offer to our party. So sad. This is what they can offer. But however, we have to give the credit to a pathfinder, a leader, who has promised Nigeria that is going to listen to them at all times. But suspending her immediately. This young lady, this young minister, went for almost a week, um, 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 what is it called? Um, stamina. She went for all uh, public governance planning. How to handle files, how to handle payments, how to receive payment, how to award contract, how to appoint aides. You can imagine sending for almost 600 million naira to a private account, to a personal account. Among other things that we, I'm sure is going to come out from the investigation. In less than, in less than one year in office. Mm. So it's so sad. But we have to give to Ashadu. Yes, of course, yes. He has, you know, proved to be a listening leader. And I can tell you that if you will remember him, in the last government, everybody would just do that. So I said, I allegedly stole almost about 50 billion without caution. Nobody could invite them. You can see that. You know what it's saying? in eight years has received over four trillion dollars. One company, one, one company. And we are, we are shouting there is no money in the system. The system is strangulated. We don't have dollar. Dollar is going up. When one company is having over four billion every month, or less, okay. it's not more. All right. Um, so um, we have to do We have to encourage him and Nigerian needs to support his government because he's doing a wonderful job and he's not going to tolerate anybody to come in and actually mess the government up. This is actually the renewal we are looking for. Well, you, it's, you seem to have given up on the youths and women uh, in what you're saying because the investigation is still on. We're hoping that a lot of things will be on and, and we also uh, are not really sure that whatever is happening in the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry remains with the Humanitarian Affairs Ministries. So we'd like your suggestion. What do you think can be done using this as a case study that will also... Uh, enable the present administration to read every other enterprise of government of whatever has been happening in the Humanitarian Affairs Commission uh, Ministry because it doesn't end there. Yeah. I'm sure looting is everywhere and the template you use uh, to fish out these people in the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry may just be the same template that you're going to use in other ministries. So what do yeah. you suggest uh, be done? And I was going to add, what is the role of um, the EFCC banks or even other security FCC, agencies yeah, yes, that. to ensure that people are not you know, siphoning these monies, the money that is meant for the vulnerable people or even everyone in general? So how can we mitigate all of this? You know what? It's, it's, too, early to, it's too early to call. About four or five ministries is presently of that investigation. Mm. And I'm sure very soon, very soon, I'll break it for you guys. Um, EFC is working on the ground and they are doing a wonderful job, including the presidency, you know, leading the guard. Um, you can imagine Minister of um, Interior. He was saying on channels yesterday that he left a company five years ago. He wasn't a director, but he's, he's a shareholder in the same company. Having almost about 80% chair, including his wife and his younger cousin on the company. 
taking a consultancy job for humanitarian for 490 million naira. And they have been fully paid. This is just about 41, 14 years or 41 years. Mm. They have been fully paid. The minister of the TPO. And he was justifying nonsense on, the, on TV yesterday that he has left the country five years ago. Yes, the director, your wife. Your wife is a direct, president director and managing director of the company. You are a large shareholder, but you are not a director. So I wonder how these guys, I wonder, you, you know, you know, from this guy that when, when you see fake results, using fake, uh, you know, some of them are not even, maybe five years out of school, some of them just are, you know, that's why you see all these shenanigans, all these small boy games. I was listening to him on channels yesterday and I was, I was worried. Maybe she was been taking some largesse from these guys. You said you are not a director of the company, but you are a major shareholder, you know? And you got the consultant for humanitarian for 450 million naira. What are you doing? What consultancy are you doing? What consultancy is doing doing in humanitarian affairs? He said the company cannot work in the interior interior alone. So you know our party needs to do a lot more with these boys. That's the conflict of interest. You are using your position to influence contract from your sister minister for your company. You are not the director yet, but you are a shareholder in the company. But the gentleman on channel's television refused to ask him some technical and corporate questions. You have withdrew from the company because the code of conduct said so. So but what can, can we do? The question, the, now, the question now is what can we do? So whatever template I'm coming, we've gotten. I, I, I'm, going to what we, I'm, going to, I'm going to what we're going to do. You know what? A minister. If you look at the civil service rule and, and, and corporate governance rule, there has to be what they call public policy. And corporate governance policy needs to be affected by the coordinating minister. Mm. They need to limit all these ministers in terms of the limits they can approve as well. All right. They need to limit them. It's not all of them. Some are mature, some are experienced, like Doris, Doris from Ministry of Interior. is a very experienced banker. I, I knew Doris when she was around the GM from Zenith Bank. So they need to strengthen and limit the approval. Some of these younger ministers should not allow to sign up maybe about 20, 30 million naira. Any other thing is to come to the chief of staff, SGF, or the presidency for approval for spending. They need to increase that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you, Nigerians are going to react to all this if all this mess continue. You know, it takes a lot of pain. This election, the last election was clearly contested. And actually, I didn't know what goes down for him to even win. So, they need to limit. That's the first thing. They must limit, they must limit their funding approval. They mm. should strip them from approving a mongoose fund like that. Yeah. Secondly, the risk management in terms of financial prudence needs to be increased. They need to audit them. That's what we are calling in governance that most of this ministry needs to have a special compliance officer, a risk officer that will advise them, that will tell them that Madam Minister, no, you cannot send almost half a billion into a personal account. It's not done anywhere. You can't do that. And thankfully, the, um, the, the experience, you know, accountant general of the Federation, my dear sister, you know, refused to do that. But what about the other one? 100 million, 200, 150. 350 million, 200 million, because the, the ministry maintains certain account, expense account. All right, this is where we have to wrap it up here, sir. So, so they, need, they, need to, they need to just, you know, reduce and we audit what they are doing in the ministry. In fact, a lot of mess. I'm sure you journalists, you've not laid your hand on those information. A lot of mess. In less than a year. Hmm. All right. Thank you so much. I mean, we've gotten some valuable contributions. It's one of the things you said was limit their funding approval, have a station compliance officer for auditing, which is great. And I think, um, I'm sure they will start to look at all of these things. So we're not here again, but we want to say thank you for coming on our program and joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, we'll be speaking to Dr. Oshinawa. He's a risk and investment expert. I'm talking about um, the EFCC probing better edu, the humanitarian affairs minister, on the 585 million naira that was sent to a personal account. We'll go on a quick break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our second hot topic. Please stay with us. <laughs>